Hey guys, Virtus Education here with episode 11 of the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over an introduction to lighting. Now, for the most part, we've just been dumping assets and BSP into our scene, you know, to form the foundation of our level. Then we added in a few decorative elements, but for the most part, it's going to be relatively dark, we can't see anything, and that's where lights come in, really, because we can't see anything, it's dark, and, you know, we want to light up that scene so the player can see what he's doing, add emphasis to certain elements, or anything like that. So in today's episode, we're going to be going over the three main types of light inside of the engine, those being the directional lights, the point lights, and the spotlights. Now, I'm also going to be going over a few different examples of how we can use them. For example, here you can see I'm using the spotlight for this little floodlight element I've got. Uh, we can use the omni point light for this, and we can use the directional light for outside. And then after going through what each of those different uh, different types of lights are, I'm going to be going through some of the different properties such as intensity, color, light position, uh, attenuation radius, um, cone angles, and so on and so forth. So, let's just go ahead and dive straight in to showing you how to get a light into your scene. So, one thing I do want to note before we do go dumping lights in our scene, for the most part, whenever you do go and create some lights and place them into your scene, you will have to build the lighting to update the shadow maps. So before we do go anywhere any further, just go ahead and go over to build here, and just press it, or just go over to build, and then uh, lighting from the drop down here. Just press control, shift, uh, and um, whatever that is. So, once that's done, let's just go ahead and dump in some point lights. I'm just going to quickly pause the video until it's finished building the lighting. Usually it does take a little while, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so now the lighting's been built, we can see everything nice and clearly. Let's just go ahead and put in some of these point lights. To do that, to access any type of light, just go over to the Place tab by pressing Shift 1. Go to lights and then select whatever you want and then just click and drag it in just like that and you can see that we can now place our little omni point light. Now what is a point light? A point light is omnidirectional. It essentially just emits light from the center of that object. So you can see here if I go back a little bit we've got the little light icon and there's a little sphere around it showing us where the light is going to be going and you can pretty much and you can very very roughly see that on the floor there now we can also play around with things like the attenuation radius to make the light a little bit bigger or smaller as we so please using the little attenuation radius thing here we can also change the intensity to make it lighter or darker or whatever you like really so what I'm gonna do here with my little point light is I'm going to try and match it to my little flying Chinese lantern that I've got over here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and click the little light color thing here I'm going to select an orangey color that matches it if you don't want to go ahead and uh, you know do it all manually here you can actually use the little picker icon to do it just like that, but sometimes it doesn't quite get the result that you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that manually. And that's how we can set the color. Now, I like to go for uh, relatively natural shades, so I'm going to keep it somewhat on the lighter white side. And I'm going to move this over just like this. We're going to bring it up, and we now have our little Chinese lantern. Now, some of the other properties we can go over. So we've gone over intensity, we've gone over color and attenuation radius, we can also give this some kind of light profile, uh, you know, a IES texture. We don't have any, but uh, I'll show you what that is in a separate video. Uh, we've also got some stuff like effects worlds. So I can essentially turn this on or off. I can also set it to cast shadows or not. So as you can see, when I toggle this on and off, the shadows for this specific light, when, it, when this the little torch that we have gets in the way, it just completely uh, dumps in a shadow there, or gets rid of this shadow. 
and effects world just completely turns the light on and off. So that's how point lights work. They're essentially little omni directional lights. The next one is the spotlight. The spotlight is, well, it essentially uh, does emit out light just like the omni light. However, it only goes in a sort of frontal cone here. So as you can see, as I rotate it, the light tends to stay within these little uh, boundary markers here. Now we can play around with the with this. So if we wanted to, we could set the inner cone angle a little bit higher because we have two cones for a spotlight, one on the outside and one on the inside. So let's just go ahead and increase the outer cone angle real quick and you can see it's getting larger. And if I do the same for the second one, the second burst of light also gets larger. But I'm going to keep this relatively small for now, just so you can actually see this. Now, we can also play around with attenuation radius on this. Just This just essentially sets how far the light can go. We can also play around with intensity just, before, just like before, to make it light, lighter or darker. And we can also play around with the color. So let's go ahead and give it a light blue shade, similar to the spotlight that we have here. I admit the emissive might be a little bit crazy there, but let's just go ahead and see if we can get a rough, uh, roughly similar color. And once again, I'm just going to place that in uh, just like that, and it looks all good. So that's spotlights. So let's just go ahead and show you directional lights. Directional lights are usually going to be used for things like the sun. So let's just go ahead and show you that, what that is. So directional lights, unlike point lights, they pretty much come up all the way from the sky. And if I go ahead and rotate this, you can see the direction of the light is actually changing. And you can see the shadows are significantly changing here. And if I wanted to, I could use this to change the time of day. As I move the light up, you will see the sun rising, and you will see the sun going back down as I rotate it. And once again, I can play around with the intensity to increase the brightness, or I could turn it off to make it nice and dark. I can change the color. I can press use as atmospheric sunlight, so whether or not we want that little light to come up there. And I can also go over indirect lighting intensity. The indirect lighting is essentially going to be the light bouncing. So as you can see inside of here right now, we have no lights in here. But the lighting is actually bouncing off of the floor here and around this little room. Now, the lighting does not quite bounce enough to fill this room. So, uh, fill this room down at the bottom here, so it's going to be relatively empty. But it does do it up here. If I was to increase the intensity, when we build the lighting, we're going to see that the rest of the environment is going to get significantly lighter. I can also turn on light shafts if I want to, but uh, you don't really need to know about that too much right now. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, place in a bunch of different, a bunch of little light actors just to show you the general workflow of placing lights into our scene. So I'm going to be using a couple of spotlights for these little uh, wall light holders that I have here. I'm going to be rotating them up because as you can see here, the little light is going to be facing up. So I'm just going to go ahead and control C and control V so we actually have a couple of these. And boom, we now have some relatively realistic lighting going on here. And I don't want these to be a plain white, I want a sort of warm feel inside of here, or even a cool feel, so I could just go ahead and make it a little bit blue if wanted it to be a cool film feel, or I could make it a little bit orange or a, bit, a little bit of yellow on there to make it feel warmer inside of this building. So let's just go ahead and do that, and I'm going to try and get the exact same shade each time there. Now, whenever you do want to get the same shade of lighting, I do advise that you copy and paste this stuff. And once again, I'm pretty sure there is a uh, a lighting in indirect lighting uh, setting for this. I'm not too sure where it is as of right now, but it's not too important. So we've got a couple more of these little actors around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to just place it onto the wall over here. Just control C. Whoops. 
control C, control V, and then it's going to move it around using the transformation tools. And I'm just going to place it in the far left one here. And to copy this really quickly, seeing as it's all in one line, I'm just going to control, as I'm just going to shift and alt and drag it in to the next place and the next one and the next one and I probably will have to change the location of all of these because they're a little bit too low down it's colliding and no lighting is actually coming out so whenever you are placing lighting I do advise that, you're ve that you try and be as careful as possible just to make sure that the lighting is coming out and we can actually see it. So that's how we can place lighting there. And there's one really, really important setting uh, for lighting that I want to go over, and that is mobility. We have three different levels of uh, lighting mobility, and this applies to point lights and spotlights. So, first and foremost, we've got static lighting. This does absolutely nothing. It should not move. The shadows will, be, will not be dynamic. We also have stationary, where they where the lights are dynamic. However, the light it, light itself won't be moving; only the shadows will. And we've also got movable, which allows us to move the light in, say, matinee or something along those lines. So that's just placing it in there. Let's just go ahead and place in a few more of these little lights. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and dump in a point light here, just to sort of highlight this text here. This is really, really important text, so, well, you know, don't forget to subscribe. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the little color here, make it all nice and sexy. And because I don't need any shadows from here, I'm going to set the mobility to static. Now, these pieces here, these little lighting pieces, there is going to be a little bit more action, so I am going to be using dynamic lights here. So I'm just going to grab uh, a few point lights, I'm going to place it down right next to our little, uh, act, our little static mesh here. And as you can see here, we've got these little red crosses. This means that there's too many dynamic lights close to each other. The reason for it coming up is an error because if you have too many dynamic lights, the shadow maps are going to be the shadow maps are going to be uh, updated too quickly, and you're going to get a significant drop in performance. So if you do not need the light to be dynamic, just go ahead and set the mobility to static, and that will fix that. Simple as that. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to copy this a few times because we've got a few of these little hanging lights here. Now, for the most part, whenever you are adding in lighting, I do not advise that you uh, just put in these lights willy-nilly. Just make sure you do have some kind of light source, as, you know, globally lit environments don't look too good. So, we've now lit up our building a little bit nicer now. So, let's just go ahead and chuck in the last few. You know what? I can't be bothered. So, I'm just going to quickly save and start to build the lighting and we can actually begin to appreciate what we've done. So I'm just going to quickly pause the video and come back in a moment. Okay, so the lighting has just finished building and we can see that everything looks really, really sexy now. Uh, we've got that global li uh, sorry, light bouncing from the direct light here and all the little point lights and these can all be seen very well. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over for lighting. There's not too much that I need to go over. I could go over color theory but you know that isn't necessarily sort of engine thing. So thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.